you guys see that speck right right down there? I can't get rid of it. It's on the inside of the lens. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. <laughs> We are gonna start the grain dryer today and we are gonna go harvest with the X9. Morning. How you doing? Good, good. Try and get the dryer fired up and see if we can get that going. I think we should. I didn't film the actual process because it's all just pushing buttons and I wanted to concentrate here, but we've got the dryer running. It's got dry corn in it now. Now we're gonna start the blower and the airlock in the back to unload this, send it over to one of these bins. This is the noise maker. Now we come in the shack here, turn our unload on, that's the unload auger in the bottom of the dryer, but we need a set point for the meter roll speed. I'm gonna go to 1% to start with, make sure everything sounds fine. Yeah, I'd even go more. One is hardly enough to do anything, I'd go five or seven or something. There's five. Everything sounds fine out here. There I can hear corn going through the air system, so something's moving. I'm gonna run back here now just to make sure there are no leaks in this pipe anywhere. So this pipe is transferring corn right now through here. This controls which bin we go to. This is our exchanger. And right now we are going back into this bin right here. No leaks. All good. Oh, hey, look. I'm inside of a grain bin. We got the food going down here. We are still trying to transfer last year's corn. I think Dad and Jim are pulling a semi-tire off. I hope. And now, up at Green Bay. Can't quite do it myself. Can't quite do it yourself? Did you try using both arms? <laughs> oh, I thought one was enough, but I'll use one of yours too. <laughs> Did that battery impact do it? Perfect. Nice. Ready? Yep. We got a tire with a hole in it. Jim's gonna go get that hole welded up, so. Should be all better in a bit. And the dryer's still running, so that's good. We are running 24% of meter roll speed. Coming out at 14.7% moisture, 89 degrees. These are the plenum temps, everything's functioning. And the sun is shining. Isla, you gonna help Jim unload that tire? Yeah? All right, he's back now. Go see if we can get it out of there. Brandon, did you come to help unload the tire too? What? No. I knew it. Jim's too good of a man. He already pulled it out himself. Yep, Isla, we don't even get to help. Did you weld the hole shut on that thing? Yep. Good deal. Are you racing laps around the dog? Oh, now she moved. And we got a new filter for the air system over here. Now we can push that dry corn through extra fast. Can I sweep all the corn dust into a pile? Yeah, if you want. Okay. And then you okay. gotta shovel it. Okay. I can help shovel it. You can help too? Yeah. You getting that cleaned up? Yeah. You're doing a pretty good job. You had to go get a shovel? Yeah. Alright. Where are you gonna shovel it to? Huh? Where are you gonna shovel it to? I don't know yet. Okay. Uh-oh, someone took a, a broom handle to the chest. That always hurts. Okay, that's good. That, no, we want to get as close as we can. There you go, get in there. Do you need a shovel too? I can go find you a shovel. Good job. Everybody's working at cleaning the place up while I videotape them. That's good. See, millennials are really good at getting out of work. We even just have the next generation do it. I can just be a YouTuber. It's time. Let's go combining. Pretty handy little egg cam we got mounted to the back of this thing. By the way, if you guys are looking for an egg cam yourself, they're built by Dakota Micro. We installed them ourselves easily on everything we got now. And, kind of goofy, but, uh, we got a very limited supply of a few specifically engraved 
limited edition Millennial Farmer egg cams. They're really cool. They actually have my logo with the words Millennial Farmer laser engraved on them. They should be on my website, uh, which is linked down below, mnmillennialfarmer.com. If they're not on there by the time this video comes out, they will be on there very soon. You just go to my merch store, check them out. We got all kinds of shirts and hats too, if you're interested. Maybe be a good Christmas gift. Tell your grandma. He's got his Cheez-Its and his trail mix. The neighbors are going back there, Onyx. They were gone last night. They were. They got the red stuff moving. We'll go get the green stuff moving next door. I'm surprised it's moving. Oh, come on now. All right, you got enough candy bars and trail mix and Cheez-Its and stuff? Yep. Okay. I suppose since this thing is worth a lot more than me, I should probably check the oil. Well, that's good. There's oil in it. Well, you can see up here, it's easy to get to the oil right down there. It's easy to get to the def. It's easy to get to the diesel, which is actually an all aluminum tank. And it's not a bad ladder. It's certainly handier to get down than our 9870. Oh, look, you fire up the X9 and FBN Todd just magically shows up in his John Deere uniform. <laughs> Check the tire pressure, would you? Yep. Can't even hardly hear the engine start. I'll find a spot to break through up here and you can just follow me through there and we'll dump coming this way every time. Yes, Todd, I'm gonna do something here and you're gonna be one of the very few people who have ever seen how it's done. So you gotta be, you gotta stay silent about it, okay? okay. All right, all right, here we go. Now don't say a word. Everything I expected. It always is, isn't it? Bye, Todd. See ya. It's time for lunch. I brought lunch. Can I okay. come for a ride? Yeah. Okay. You better boogie. So, what do you think of this grain carton? I like it. Do you like it? Is it kind of fun? Yeah. Is it kind of scary? Only when you get close to the truck loading into it. Five to six, is your mom in there with sandwiches for me? Yep, she's in here. I better come get those. Hi. Onyx needs a snack and I benefit from it. Essentials. Oh yes, home cooked again. I'm not used to that turning the opposite way. Like oh, when you when you back way. up? Yeah. Yeah, learning how to back up with a trailer is, it's a challenge. Especially when it costs as much as a house. Yeah, when you're dealing with half a million dollars? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. How do you feel about getting that close to the million, million dollar X9? It's not as bad as combining beans because you're way farther away in corn. Oh, you're further away with the corn because yeah. the header's bigger? Yeah, there's maybe 10 feet that's, in between. That's true. On um, beans, we're like this far away. Yeah, so you're right next to them. I don't think it was, but I can't come up later to see, but I'd be surprised if it was, but I suppose the corn we're putting in could have ran up more in the sidewall some of it. Let's go for it here on Explore. And then one thing you gotta watch, you can't pull up on him or, or like come up on him if his auger isn't fully out or fully closed. I hate dumping into the semis. That's the scariest part? Yeah. Just because you have to get so close? Yeah, maybe just a little bit. And once we get to the back here, it'll fill up really fast. Power lines are scary, like when you gotta make the loop. Yeah, they're really dangerous. Gotta pay attention. You hate being the guy that everybody has to wait for? You know what? 
That's pretty typical for any grain cart driver, bud. I don't think that's just you. Haven't you ever heard the saying, it's always the grain cart driver's fault? No. That is a thing. Uh-oh. He's waiting for us. Onyx is definitely struggling a little bit to keep up to a 40-foot header at the moment, but that's okay. I don't expect that grain cart and our three trucks to be able to keep up to this thing when, when we're going hard. You can kind of see where it's smooshed right there ahead of us. That's where you, that's how you follow? Yep, I keep racing on that. Show them. See how it's smooshed there and there's that one row that's flattened out? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Like so you keep that centered? those two, yep. That's perfect. But it's not always there. In the beams, there wasn't that. Sometimes there was like a black line from the dust, but most of the time there wasn't, so you couldn't follow anything. Just another unbelievably beautiful day of harvest here. Unreal. It's been a complete 180 from where we were last year, walking around in the mud and 20 degrees. And I, I, I wore four layers of clothing on my upper body all of last harvest. Now I'm in a t-shirt, harvesting corn. Crazy. Right now, one of the issues that I'm having, I'll spin the camera around here and show you. These stalks have frozen a couple of times and they're so brittle that when the head grabs them, they're actually breaking and you can see all the, the residue or the trash or the, the plant material that's being fed into the head and into the feeder house and going through the machine, which is fine. The machine's doing a good job, even at four and a half miles an hour cutting this kind of corn. Right here, you can see we're pushing 4,400 bushels, 4,800, 45, over 5,000 bushels an hour through the machine, but the plant material builds up. So this machine would be able to handle five and a half, six miles per hour without much of a problem, but the plant material gets too thick and it builds up on the head and then you get what I'm having. That big pile. And then this row doesn't feed in correctly. So I've been messing around with the deck plates a lot. If I open those up, that does help, but then I lose a little bit more at the head because what it does is allow more of the corn to go through. Um, so the deck plates help. I've got the fan speed down as low as I can get it. I'm doing what I can to make it better, but ultimately I just have to drive a little bit slower than I want to. When the head's down and I'm eating corn going across the field, I'm still doing a lot of acres an hour. And as long as I stay under that speed, I don't have the issues. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of deal with it. Throttle back. And then I usually take it out of park, put it warm up for a second. And then I crank this up to about one quarter. And then after I do that, I open up our food to about a quarter. And I wait for it to speed up, and then there it goes. And then I might move up here a bit. There we go. And we're just going straight line to the other end semi. Perfection. Have you gotten a ride in the X9 yet? Uh, not in the field. Not in the field? The first person to sit in it. Oh yeah, right. you went and christened the seat when it got delivered to the house. I'm getting a bit far away, so this time I might steer in a bit. And it's getting up there, so I'm going to drive up to it. Getting up there, I'm going to close it. Let this drain out for a minute. Then, throttle back. Shut off the armor. Give it in for all the corn to dump in, and then we're good. You need, we need to get you some sunglasses for out here. You're all squinty. Seems a little hard to keep up with this corn. It's not easy, I'll tell you that. I believe you. I did it last year. You seem to do, be doing way better than me. Were you doing it on corn? Yep. So, this is about the third time I've had to do this. I've covered a lot of acres, but I've also had to fight it by opening up the plates and speeding up the head and backing up and hoping the wind pushes it in. It sounds like they're going to send the dealer out tomorrow to do some adjusting on the auger. Apparently they're thinking if we raise the auger up that uh, it'll help that some. So if the dealer can't do it, we'll be uh, moving that up tomorrow to at least try it. Onyx has got to fill up a truck and a half down there, so we had a minute to wait. Figured we'd get out and see what kind of job it's doing. Right here, I was pushing about five miles an hour. I tilted the head back, got it working a little bit better. How's it look, Kent? Good. 
That's what I think. Huh? Tastes good too. Tastes good too. Kent was hungry. Does it taste like the test weight is decent? How was I know it's dry? <laughs> yeah, she's doing an awfully dang good job. It's kind of like the uh, planter we had out here this spring. In all honesty, it works better if you can drive faster, push more bushels through it, make it work a little harder. Compared to last year, this corn is so much higher quality. I mean, we're running over 55 pound test weight out of the field. This stuff right here is about 20% moisture, maybe even down into the teens a little bit. That's almost as dry as I've ever seen. So we've got pretty good corn here to be harvesting. So it has good conditions. The only downfall is how brittle this stuff is. Compared to fighting mud and 10 or 20 degrees like last year, I will take this. I'm gonna go in here and see if I can find the restroom. Uh, uh, too many weeds right there. There we go. Oh yeah, he's full. Oh, there's some cab corn. Kent, you want me to show you a trick? Sure. All right, you cannot talk about this with anybody. Okay. Very few people see how I do this. Now do not speak a word, ever. You understand me? Yep. See you later. Bye, Kent. I didn't think any of these guys were ever going to leave. Seems like I'm a popular guy today. Seems like it. Everybody wants to be my friend all of a sudden. Oh, that's nice. Weird, huh? Yeah. Swapping passengers again. Everybody just wants to come see me today. That's going to do it for the Nionics. Yep. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. I'll probably empty the car in that then. No, no, I don't want to hit that button. I want to hit this button, this one. There are so many buttons to push, and then when I do it with my left hand, because I'm running a camera, I can't keep track of stuff. We started at 1.30 this afternoon with the combine, and we just knocked out 100 acres. And it's only, it's not even 9 o'clock. And 30 acres of that was Endros, and Onyx came out to get his homework done. And got none of it and done. And got none of it done, because there's no internet out here. Can't even do homework without the internet anymore. It's a shame, a crying shame. Got to put the school's computer in the trunk of the four-wheeler to get home. Folding. This will be the first time that I've folded this thing since the people who knew what they were doing left. Sure hope I don't let them down. I do like the speed at which it folds. It's got a lot of. A lot of residue to compete with there. It did it. What do you think, Ditch? Huh? Kind of noisy around here all of a sudden, huh? A little bit. Everything looks good back there around the bin. We got the fans on. The pipes are all together. We'll go in here and check the computer quick. All right. Coming out around 15.2, which is actually a little bit dry. There's our plenum temperatures in the dryer. 23% of speed. I'll go back here and get a physical sample to make sure the moisture tester is pretty close. Seventeen. Take off for the temp. We're gonna take off about one for the temp, I just know that. It hasn't adjusted yet. 16%. That'll dry down a little bit in the bin, so we're going into the bin around 16% right now, and it'll dry down to about 14 and a half. Be just right. And I've got my fancy little Inno Pro cameras here from Dakota Micro all set up, so I can check on everything, go to page one. I can check on everything overnight, make sure the pipes are good, the dryer numbers are good, Everything's still together. It's going to be so great. That's it. I'll see you all at 2 a.m.